Ten years ago, undercover police shot and killed 29-year-old Mark Duggan mm. in Tottenham. What started as a few hundred people from the local community protesting for justice, it quickly turned into full-blown riots. Now, there were no-go zones across the country, massive destruction of property, and five people lost their lives in the week of carnage. Well, the violence wasn't just contained within the capital. It spread to places like Manchester and Birmingham, where the shops in the city were looted and torched, and police and fire crews were also attacked. So P Peter Vahey, the chief constable of Greater Manchester Police at the time, and was in charge of the policing operation. He joins us now. Peter, uh, welcome to the programme. Um, now, we Morning. saw a rise uh, in tensions last year between the public and the police once again. Uh, could the riots of 2011 happen in, in today's climate? Is it, is it something you think we could end up back in? You can never say it couldn't happen again. I mean, I think it's far more complex. Often every year people say, oh, well, there could be riots this summer, particularly when it's very hot. And as you say, there are tensions. Um, I think in some ways it's remarkable that, you know, we don't have the sort of riots and disturbances that you see in other countries like in the US and in, and in France. Um, there isn't that sort of tradition um, in UK society. That's not to say that there aren't serious issues, that there aren't tensions, that there are issues between the police and black people. Um, and that in, you know, quite a lot of the communities that the police spend a lot of time in at the moment, you know, there are serious issues around alienation and poverty and inequality. Um, but, you know, I, I think there were particular conditions back in 2011. What really struck me at the time was, you know, the impact of social media, you know, and the police weren't used to that. You know, they were used to being able to gather intelligence from out there on the street. Um, but, you know, the issue at that, at that time was that social media was still fairly new. Um, and the police found it very hard to actually know when the next bit of, uh, you know, the violence would break out because it was all being spread on separate groups on social media. And I think the police have got better at trying to monitor that. Mm. Uh, last summer in the United States, we saw a terrific amount of, terrific completely the wrong word mm. to use, a terrible amount of looting and rioting and, and smashing up cities and, and really awful, awful carnage. Now, whilst protests and the cause of Black Lives Matter spread to the UK, the looting thankfully did not. Is this an area where, uh, despite all of the conflation we hear between different police forces around the world, do people in this country understand that the British police are very, very different from the US police? They're, they're not armed and are not as violent in the way actually that many continental police forces as well as the American police are. Uh, do we recognise somehow that, that our police are better? Well, I just think it's a different context, you know, particularly when you look at France. Uh, French people just expect that they're going to, going to be violence in a protest. They're going to attack the police and the police are going to attack them back. That's not our tradition. I think what happened, you look at what happened in Manchester back in 2011. There was one very bad night when, as you say, shops were attacked in Manchester and Salford. But the very next day, there was a huge wave of anger from local people who came out into the street and started a campaign called I Love Manchester. Uh, and, you know, cleared up all the rubbish and were very, very clear that they didn't want this to happen again. So I think also what happened back in 2011, a lot of people realised, you know, well, however angry you may feel, however alienated, attacking your own community, attacking the shops, attacking the businesses, attacking the police and firefighters doesn't actually achieve a great deal. Um, so I think, you know, we start from a different position. I think the British police have got much better. Um, at identifying some of, you know, the causes when they when they, you know, they start, you know, they've got a lot better at trying to manage protests, talking to uh, those involved, um, you know, working with community leaders, those sorts of things. But as I say, you can never be complacent. These sort of things can break out just from one particular incident that's happened in Tottenham. Uh, but I think you need to recognise, you know, number one, there is a very tradition, very different tradition in this country. But at the same time, certainly at the moment, you know, there are serious issues around violence, around the drugs trade. Um, you know, about that level of alienation. Um, and I think on the whole, the police, particularly in our cities, are very concerned about some of that at the moment uh, and some of the violence they're seeing day to day. Can I what? just ask you if, you, if you could make one sort of big change to Im improve our sort of knowledge from what we've learned over the last 10 years, um, and I know it's probably difficult to pick one, what, what, what would that be? I think it is about, how, you know, how you monitor social media, how the police monitor social media. Now, you've got to be very careful about that. You can't intrude uh, into people's private communications. But I think that's the one, one of the ways that policing has changed and criminality has changed. And you've got to remember that back in 2011, a lot of that was about sheer criminality. You know, yes, there were some people very angry about, you know, the shooting of Mark Duggan, but 
Um, you know, the fact is a lot of it was sheer criminality breaking into premises and, and a lot of, you know, criminality now is organised uh, across social media, or across encry- encrypted communications. Um, and I think, you know, if there's one thing that would improve policing, it is, it's helping the police to, to cope with that situation. And of course, more broadly, the amount of crime which is now committed through the Internet. Well, listen, Sir Peter Fahi, thank you so much uh, for joining us. It's really good to talk to you. He's the chief uh, constable. He was the chief constable of Greater Manchester Police at the time of the, the riots all those years ago. What really struck me about those riots was just how many people were pr- were white and mm. very privileged and in many cases privately educated, just getting in on stealing some TVs and iPods from Wh- various Which ones? Shops. The ones years ago or the ones... The ones years ago. The ones yeah, years ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the thing, isn't it? And, and actually, I think one of the things we don't focus on when we hear about these sort of riots is they, they, you know, for in particular the Black Lives Matter, right, although the, the incident uh, was one uh, one death which was not acceptable, mm-hmm. but the riot themselves caused over 19 deaths. And I mean, here, here we go again. You have Mark Duggan who was killed uh, in, in, in a terrible way, but then five other people killed through the riots. I mm-hmm. mean, and so it, it, it's all it's all a bit, uh, hopefully we'll learn something. Thought we'd moved on from an eye for an eye. Yeah, but... yeah. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.